thermal sound wave wave. We have Miss N.K. Morton joining us right now on the program. It's thermal sound waves. What's going on? How you doing? I'm well. How are you? Great, great, great. great. To be here if you want, in you studio with yeah, you, you guys. Yeah, you, you can pick up the mic. You great can, to be. You can take it out of the uh, oh, host oh. if you want to be more. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Great I just to put be up in there because you, you feel like yeah. you know, like, yeah, <laughs> like we're legit. You know. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's all I put it in for. We're legit. They got to stand. Oh my god, so silly. Okay. Right, right, right. Now, last time. Uh, we've seen you mm-hmm. was at the rebirth the event yes yes yeah. I had a great time at your party yeah, that you. you guys had some amazing music oh, thank I had thank a great you. time if I had the right shoes on <laughs> it would have been something else you know oh, but well, now you know now you know <laughs> I didn't know it was going to be Shout a party party. Yeah, I yeah, thought, yeah. you know, I, I thought we were going to do some. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> thank Fashion's you, thank okay. you, thank you. You know, these are. It's that monsoon weather out there. Yes. I don't know what yeah, we have tornadoes. going on in New York. All this right. crazy rain. Yeah. At least we're not but, getting tornadoes. Uh, to get to, right. That's At why when I land, they said. Oh, right. yeah, they yeah. said it was mechanical. Then it was like, yeah. oh, there's tornadoes. Tornadoes. 60,000 feet. Uh, I'm like, what? Yeah, Do you know, I'm sorry to you. Do you know people were complaining? At the airport, people are like, what's your problem? I'm like, what do you want to do? Be on the be in the air and, and and pray to God and 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 clutch the seat? No, I'll sit right here. Right, like, exactly. If this is a know. spot to get into, then yeah, I'll fly. But if it's not, bad I'm, weather. I'm 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 cool. Yeah, exactly. I'm stay exactly. Stay right here until it clears out. <laughs> That's because right. Because once you're up there, you know, right. you're yeah. up there. And while everybody was complaining, I was being nice to the you know the, was it was it the gate people. It's yeah. Like, How are you okay? And I, I'm certain you didn't mind. I mean, when you're traveling and you're a frequent flyer, you, you get to understand that. Yes. You know, when they tell you it's a weather issue, <laughs> all right, well, we're sitting here. <laughs> right, exactly. I'm just because I've been in a couple of planes where, you know, it was bright outside for a second and then we flew through a storm cloud and it was dark all around the plane all of a sudden and wow. it was rocking, shaking, and rocking. I was like yeah. praying <laughs> that we make it. To no get matter, down there, so no matter it's like, who you are, how anti <laughs> God, I'm um, only spiritual you are. When you in a plane Woo. and that turbulence hit, Woo. and you start clutching that seat, listen, you start praying to whoever. I've had a couple of instances. Whoever one, you can think of. One time, I think we had hit it some type of air pocket or something like that. And it was one of those big drops, and I was just like, Oh, those oh, right, the, the <laughs> right. drops. The big, it was oh, one of those big drops. I started you know? thinking about Con Air. Yeah, just, <laughs> I started thinking about everything. The Wright Brothers, anybody. Oh my gosh. So, you know, I, I mean, I I just, I don't give them a hard time when there's stuff oh. going on in the airport. I let them do what they need to do and exactly. I just hold tight and just <laughs> That's sit down. Right. And get I to always the thank the right. pilot, too. People don't yeah. think the pilot. Like, you're in control of my life. Right. He's I understand a, that this is mechanical right. that can, you know, help the air, air traffic control can help fly, but still the pilot. To control your life. Listen, the pilot <laughs> wants to get home safe as well. It's not like he has Everybody an injector does. seat. Exactly. You know, he's going down with us. <laughs> right. So, you know, right. if he's saying it's a problem, we're listening to him. Right. It's a problem. Definitely. You know? Yeah. And you know about flying because obviously you're a performer and you have been, you know, a lot of different All places right. and stuff yeah. like that. And, and fly. Right. And you've, <laughs> you've written for many, many people. Maya, right. Backstreet right. Boys. Right. Uh, the list goes on and on. A lot of people. A lot of people. Who, who she wrote for? Maya Backstreet Boys, Faith Evans. The Backstreet Boys. Yeah, yeah. Right. The Backstreet Boys. The Backstreet Boys. The Backstreet Boys. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. <laughs> they are the Backstreet Boys. Yeah, exactly. yeah. I mean, I've I've had the the pleasure of you know working on some fantastic projects. I mean, I've worked with everyone from. Behind the scenes from Chris Rock on his comedy show. Um, yep. When he used to do the HBO show, I actually no was, oh, used to right. be on the show with him. I actually, I've done, I didn't do No Sex in the, um, I did the Champagne I song the with him with a, uh, that, uh, <laughs> on his first comedy album. And then when he did the uh, comedy show on HBO, mm-hmm. f- feature on there as the singer on the show. Oh, okay. Did, skit, did a skit or two nice. of him. Um, and, you know, we've done background for tour for a little while with the Isley Brothers. Yes. Like, um, Legends. Background. Uh, you can Tina. hear my voice on, you know, stuff with Diana Ross. Legends. A lot of different people. Legends. You know, uh, you know you're kind of going a little. Legends. Legends. Not I mean, just, we know not, it, not just anybody. We talk about like, heavyweights and legends in the game. You said Diana Ross, <laughs> right? It's my friend me. Malik Pendleton. Legends. Yeah, right. Wow. My freak Ma- friend um, Malik Pendleton, who produced for Mary J. Blige, Seven Days, and all, uh, 
so many other records but he did a, a great song for diana ross and you know he had the pleasure of doing the backgrounds on that song for her and uh, her Gotta daughter be free. is a woman from blackish uh yes tracy, tracy ellis. ellis ross yeah. yeah so i i had the pleasure of doing that and uh, i worked with that from rakim i've worked with I mean, it's uh, uh, crazy. You wrote rhymes right. for Rakim? I, no, I'm singing on uh, <laughs> uh, um, Stay a While on the 21st. Oh, okay. That's me singing on Stay a While. Peep the Technique, were you in the background? Oh, I'm sorry? In the video from Rakim, Eric B. Rakim, Peep the Technique, were you no. in the background? No, I was oh, a little young God. for that one. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, watch that video. I did, wait, wait when, back, in the, back in high school, I did do a video for Jungle Brothers, What You Waiting For, I'm in that video. Wow, like, wow. <laughs> Oh, well, yeah, oh, really? like after high school, we like you know they had okay. little auditions and things like that. So you could go. So and you're, you're a househead too, because Jungle yeah. Brothers yeah. is hip hop, but he also househeads. Right. Yeah. And you're all those people that you talk about that you work with, like you can see it's evidence in your catalog as far as what you've done as an artist yourself. Mm -hmm. Like the variety of music that you have, right. you can see like all the different all areas yeah. that that I you are sprinkled in. I got to say, I've the thing that I love the most about what I do is that I get to play in so many different genres. You know, when working with Karen Clark Sheard and Faith Evans, first of all, having them, those two powerhouse voices sing a song that I wrote, you know, and th that be on Karen's first album, her first solo release, that was a blessing for me because, um, you know, I, I was raised in the church. But I was able to do something in that genre, to write in pop music, to write in R&B music. So I never feel um, boxed in as a writer. You know, I feel like I can express myself across the board. I have a, a love for music in general. I was classically trained as a singer. And uh, I just, I love music, all types of now, music. What does that mean, people say classically trained as a singer? Uh, well, I went to LaGuardia High School of Performing Arts. <laughs> the, the AKA I did. Fame School. Fame School. <laughs> uh, you know what? I was supposed to be in there, but they, they didn't take me. What did? What were you going? What did I was you trying to, to be. Uh, artist, like, oh, 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 art. Okay. Yeah, art. Yeah. Okay. But I, the way you said okay, it was like oh, oh, art. No, no, no. no, no you kind of you kind of put me I, out no, of it. No, I oh, have a lot art. of friends. Not my art, but that art. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, I'm saying. Yeah, I have but a lot drawing. of art major friends. Drawing, so. Shout out to all my art major <laughs> friends, all my people, my lag people. You but know, they, they're they all let over. me. They tried to have me draw somebody that was sitting down, and I'm like, I, I couldn't concentrate on drawing yeah. this woman because was she I'm in high school. And I'm like, you know what I mean? I was looking at something else. You know <laughs> so they was like, No, we're not gonna accept you. I'm like, No, I can really draw it. Just her. Oh she was looking, goodness. you know, right. she made me feel a certain way. She should have been a little less attractive. Is that what you needed? She just made me feel a certain way. I wasn't expecting that. And I didn't make it, so I had to go to my zone school, but then I got to switch to another school. So, yeah, so yeah. shout out to LaGuardia. Yeah. They didn't sorry. accept me. So sorry. They sorry. That was messed up, too. I was, I was hurt, though. I thought I was going to make it. Sorry. I really so thought sorry. I was going to make it. I didn't make it. Yeah. Um,. I went there. <laughs> like, whatever, just on. I got uh, in. I who, got who, who in. Who did you attend with? Because whenever I hear people talk about oh, LaGuardia and fame, they always talk about. My friends, my there's friends. always somebody that they went with. Well, I went to school with Marlon Wayans, Omar Epps. Ah, um, that class. Okay. Uh, Bokeem Woodbine. Uh, cool. Like, yeah, yeah. We, we had a step, Mark Pitts. The wow. man who went to use in school bad, with bad us. Boy. Yeah. yeah. Um, like, it's a whole crew of us. Like, it's. And I, I like, noticed this when it comes to certain schools like LaGuardia, Juilliard, there's a set of people that they'll be there and they'll grow together. And, and it's just the connections is crazy, like the degree of separation. Right. You no, know, Marlon Wayne's like, that's. Right. Yeah. People don't understand. That's. He's part of the Wayans brothers, right. the Wayans family. Dynasty. Right. The, dynasty. the only people to put on their whole family. <laughs> right, right. Their dynasty. whole family well, was in a movie. <laughs> people of color. People right. of color. Right. Right. In a right. movie. Right. Like, they actually had to be right. that great right. to break into Hollywood. Like right. and be like, all right, you know, we you know we hate y'all, but y'all are really that good. Like right. and him and Omar are still tight. Like this, they're like like this. Like he always talks about, oh, like oh my, that's my dude, that's my boy. Like that's great. Yeah, there was a, there's a couple, there are a few other. Which one people didn't like you? Really? What do you mean? Like, it, yeah, no, yeah. it wasn't that. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. If you had a chance, if, if you had a choice, if, not a chance, because they didn't. If I had a choice, I would it be Omar or Marlon Wayans? No, because I actually dated one of their friends in high school. Uh, but that's fine. They, but it's like a was three, it the guy the three in amigos. Juice? Oh my God! Migos? It was the guy in Juice. At no. the end, oh, 
Oh, I know who you're talking about. Okay. I forget his name. They both were in you. Yeah. I know who you're talking about. They both were in you. He he had that line. Yes, yes. (laughs) I know exactly who it is. How was it? Listen, we we do it. It's it's, it's high school. We all. It's every. There's no. It's all love. Everyone's great. You know. Even um. When was the last time you, you talked to him? Uh, I speak. I speak to them all. You know, social media. No, I'm talking about. But him. Who? He's talking about the one you dated in the high, in high school. Maybe three weeks ago. <laughs> oh, so still fresh. <laughs> yeah, we're still cool. Okay, okay. You gotta look at me like that. No, no, no. <laughs> we're not friends. I'm not saying that. It's we're like, friends, what? friends. You know. Listen, so, right, like, right. I'm still right. friends with. Oh, I'm my lady. My I mean, lady, my lady. You so, saw my lady, but we were I'm talking about. Well, I'm not going to say that. Some of them I don't want to be friends <laughs> right. with. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Some of them I don't want to be friends oh with, but, you know. Right, right. But um, yes. I, I was going to tell you as well, you were talking about the when they see us. Uh, someone who was a very good friend of mine was Yusuf Salam. He went to school with me. Mm. He was in school with me. He wow. went to LaGuardia. He was a very great friend of mine in school. I mean, we're still friends. Um, and he was a LaGuardia art major mm. when that happened to him. So that would de- that directly, you know, I remember that vividly when all of that went down. I couldn't believe, like, that was my friend. Every day we were in the lunchroom, we were doing, like, that was my right. friend friend. Right. Right. Well, you didn't right. have murder burgers because you went to LaGuardia High School. Y'all had gourmet. We, we, had, we had decent food. We yeah, had, decent food. We had a decent cafeteria. We had decent food. You we know. did in my school, too. I, I, yeah, like toasted yeah, almond, but I, ice cream and that kind of Yeah, yeah, ice we, cream we, and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I I think I played it we got safe, a, we though. We got a tip to go around really, the corner to make it home safe in my school. You know, I think I just really rocked with the snacks because I came in in the morning with some food. I would you had the oh, real food from home. Had, you, had you had the had real, real home food. food. <laughs> you had money, but okay. No. <laughs> I would just get some food in the you morning. Had, you know, we were right. down in that area. You know, they had all the little diners and bakeries and stuff like that. So I never had stuff. diners right. and bakeries in my high school. Oh, well, you, but you were in LaGuardia, area, though. We went, you know, we're in, mid, in Midtown Manhattan, right. the, the west side, you know, right. over there near Juilliard yeah. and... Uh, the you know uh, all those Lincoln Center, uh, Lincoln Center, and all. Those Did y'all places, have like so. battles or fights with like Juilliard, like like no. artistic fights? No, we just had to worry about getting beat spin? up by King High School. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the infamous <laughs> King. Right next door to King. us. Yeah, and it was like King. we we infamous. we would Randolph. get out early enough that we could get out of there because yeah. they were angry yeah. Yeah, for whatever they, reason. They because were because they couldn't go to they, they couldn't go to LaGuardia. That's why. They were mad because they couldn't get to LaGuardia. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like I was like, all right, we need to they we we got out when we got out, maybe I think forty minutes before they were released or uh-huh. and then, you know, we <laughs> <Is> were <it> released. <laughs> Before they were that released. was one of those Freudian slips, like released. I mean, I meant to say before they were dismissed. <laughs> right. now, you said what you wanted to say. Do what you had to say. Release. That's what it was. <laughs> because it was just like always wanting to fight and one. And we were like, listen, we're right. coming out of hit school with our violence and stuff. We're in a good right. mood. We right. Got our, like, right. You know, we're, like, right. Like, we're coming from our acting right. class or our right. vocal class well, or whatever. You had to use you your know? acting skills though. Right. No, we had to use. Well, Brother, some of us were coming sister, from the hood. So we I was all definitely one. coming. From the hood, right? I lived right. in the Bronx. I was coming from the hood, from the Bronx, from but the Bronx, yeah, on Sedgwick. Well, I was definitely coming oh, from Sedgwick. the hood. Okay, yeah. all right, all right. Shout out to you. So you were good. You knew how to maneuver. Yeah, right? I, you was so, like right, but I still and you know it wasn't like they were throwing fair ones out there. Oh, you know? of course, <laughs> like, of course. Yeah. Fair one. <laughs> it wasn't that wasn't happening. <laughs> right, <laughs> right, right. Oh, you look pretty. Let's jump. Getting, you were getting beaten <laughs> hands from everybody. Right, <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> you know, so well, you smart. You know? <laughs> Right. Oh man, that was a it was a crazy time, but you know, it was a lot of fun. Right. Because we were in, you know, LaGuardia, we had our own little thing going on and and it was a creative school. You you know, yes. it was it was a great vibe and you know, I had my my really good friends and you know, it was a great experience for me. I learned a lot. They really do prepare you for your if you're going for uh a career in whatever your field is. I feel like I was prepared as a singer to go to do the next thing now. There are other yeah. aspects of it that I wish that they would teach you more like the music business or some. they should right. give you some business courses on even being an artist and just selling your stuff and whatever it may be. They should also pair that with actually um, having business courses so that True. you can do the business. True. 
do so, your business while you're out there and not t- take be taken advantage of. So they didn't teach you. If you wish they would have taught all the students more business, where did you learn your business savvy from? Oh, well, I got to say, I just, I don't know. I, I want to say, I think because my mom uh, was, uh, you know, my mom was grooming me to be an attorney. My mom, this this music industry you stuff. Oh, I do. <laughs> <laughs> this music industry stuff was just like not the business for her. She was like, it's cool that you, you, you're you doing this and you love it and that's whatever, but I'm grooming you to be an attorney. And so um, I was I was pretty serious minded about my business early on. I, I started my publishing company when I was 19. Oh, I nice. never sold my publishing to Smart. anyone. I Smart. always kept my publishing. Yep. I own all my nice. publishing, you know. So oh. from the gate, I had right my now? company. I'm sorry. You see anybody right now? <laughs> no, I'm <laughs> not. <laughs> so it's a, it I was important to me. Oh, you are. You know what? Literally. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. Stop. <laughs> Go ahead. Dude. It's like, so it was important to me. You saw my girl. To, I, I learned, you know, just paying attention to some of the things that I'd seen, being around some of the people that, you know, maybe had been taken advantage of or, you know, just seeing some misfortune with other people. I, I learned. I was right. one of those people that I could learn from the other's examples. I didn't need it to happen to me. And um, I did that. I started out with, and I... I made certain to always copyright my stuff, my material, and you know, just protect myself. Absolutely. And then I just went about just working with different people and trying to have a good reputation, build a good reputation of being someone who's solid, who is going to do great work, and um, not going to be any drama or anything like that. We're going to get money together, and that was my thing. You know, about the business, about that business. It's Thermal Sound Waves, a natural alternative to fast food radio. We're here with N.K. Morton. Call us, 347-454-1278, or email us, thermalsoundwaves at gmail.com. I want to go back a little bit and then um, come forward as far as songwriting. When that happened with Yousef and whatnot, because that was your your Mm -hmm, close friend, mm -hmm. How did that affect you at that time? And then what what was going through your mind when that whole situation went down with the Central Park Five? Well, I, I think um, it was a little surreal because um, before uh, before that happened with Yusuf, Yusuf and I, we had another friend, um, Carter Registford, that went to school with us, and he passed away. He had a, um, his death. He was uh, these some people. Uh, he was he was killed. He was robbed and he was killed. And he was at, in school with us as well. So we were still reeling from that experience, you know. And you know, as a young teenager, you know, you're kind of in your own little bubble and you're not really feeling all the stuff that's going on in the world because we're coming to this school and it's mm-hmm. safe and we're in right. here and we're doing right. these things that we love. And that happened, and that kind of rocked our world. And then shortly thereafter, you know, we hear some craziness about Yusuf on the news. And, like, I'm telling you, when I say I sit with this guy at the lunch table and joking with him all day and talking about stuff and, you know, just for – and then, you know, we would travel home together. He was living in Schaumburg. I I was traveling further up, but we would travel. So to hear that they're saying this thing and – about my friend, someone that I know personally that right. is one of the gentlest souls, that's one of the sweetest people you could ever meet, just like so soft-spoken, just even then, just really cool. Um, it was just like an out-of-body experience. I could not believe the things that they were saying, you know, and when he came home, like after all that, when he came home, I remember visiting him um it's about years later yeah years later i remember visiting him and i he i he even came and hung out with me in the studio i took him brought him into the studio Ooh. one time you know to you know he he was there for me i was going through some stuff at that time with my label and you know it was just and i was a bit frustrated and you know he was someone that was he knew me when and he was someone that i can talk to about those difficulties and things like that and i just I just didn't, I never really had the words to say, you know, like, 
yeah. to, to really verbalize all the things that I was feeling about what had happened to him. And all I could do was just try to be a friend and be right. there and, you know. In a situation like that, there's, there's nothing you can really say. Like, right. I understand. Right. Oh. And then at that time when he had come out, you know, people were still thinking that they were guilty of this stuff. And you know, people still and, do. They right, still people do. still do. Well, we, it is, you can have the evidence right in front of your face. Yeah. Yeah. it's still going to be yeah. there because it was so. It was said so many well, times. Well, it's going to be there so because lie, they don't. Lie so many times it becomes truth. Right. To well, because um, you know, I watched. They just had like a 2020 special on it the other day, and um, I watched that, and you know, I was disturbed by how they tried to wrap up the story towards the end when they are still trying to cling to, well, you know, they were guilty and they shouldn't have given them this money. And they like, no, they actually weren't guilty. You guys never had, that was a very vicious crime. It was, a, and they had no, none of the DNA was on them. Right. On these kids. Right. You know, they're teenagers. So are they, you trying to act like there's some sophisticated crime syndicate? Right. Like there's no exactly. DNA evidence on exactly. any of these yeah. kids. Well, they have to justify Anywhere. what they Anywhere. did to them. Right, exactly. So it's like we can't ever, it, they don't ever want to say we made a mistake. Exactly. Because then they feel it's going to open the floodgates yes. for how many other mistakes did you yes. make? How many? But we see that there was just a man that yeah. just got released from jail the yeah. other day. Like he was in there 20, 20 something some years. Yes, that's right. You know, so we know that there were a lot of quote unquote mistakes made. Right. You know. And then on top of that, which is another angle that some people don't really look on, is that crime, a crime was committed. Right. But it was committed by a other group of people that may have their own problems. Right. But I, I can't put it on me. Let's put it on them. And we're connected right. to the people that's in the law enforcement. Right. Let's put it on them. Right. I'll be honest, even to this day, that lady, no disrespect to the, she's she passed away. Cool. The lady that was jogging over there in Queens, I think it is, about two years ago she felt jogging she just found dead mm -hmm. and they had a sketch of a supposedly black guy mm -hmm. and then they found this one guy I was like yeah we caught him and I looked at him like he looks nothing like the sketch mm. and this dude looked like he looks slow are you talking about the case that just recently they had I saw it on the news when they, the guy that they just tried and yes and like it's, now he's in jail like, right. yeah yeah we got him clap it up I found out there are many cases like that and this story this situation reminds me of that case where that was a family killing or that was some that was some uh other organization killing and you gotta put the body on somebody else but you didn't pay your debt you, we told you pay your debt now we gotta take your daughter the thing that really concerns me is just like with the central park thing uh case you had an actual rapist murderer out there raping and murdering people and right. he raped and murdered some more people before he was caught because you put this on these kids and he didn't want to say we right. apologize and never, you left never and this man so you let him still carry on exactly and that's the thing and if we're, I understand that police were I know I have people I have friends are in police um, yeah, and I understand right. there are policemen and I understand police women policemen I understand that this is a tough job. I understand it Very. is not easy. I understand that there's a lot of distrust um, and that maybe people are not willing to uh, cooperate with them, give them information so they can go. But what I'm saying is you're paid to do the police work. Right. Not to rush to judgment, not to fabricate, uh, uh, not to fabricate lies and stories to support the the case you are trying to make oh, because Philip you Rooms can't in prison. right i mean you need to do the work of you know uh do the real police work and find the actual murderer rapist right. killer because yeah. this community is not safe by you just taking people off the street innocent people that had nothing to do with that and putting them in jail because the the real criminal is still loose wasn't like right. that for in but atlanta with the atlanta child murders back in the yeah right. but this is something that going back centuries this is like it's the same old thing. It's nothing right. new. Right. So you well you know. with the and with uh, the with the victim, um, the, I, I think her name is Trisha. The Central Park jogger, jogger. Um, 
feel terrible for her. A terrible crime happened to her. And she's not aware of who did what to her because right, she was right. Oh, she yeah. doesn't know. She this is she's believing what she was told yeah. all these years. And when you're told something and you're then you then go on and you create your narrative. I'm a survivor of this, and that you go on and you're you're advocating for others and trying to change laws. So this thing and it's built. It's all predicated on this story that was told to you. When later on it finds out, well, maybe that's not the story. That is a little jar. I can imagine yeah. that being jarring, and it could yeah. be disturbing. And then what? What is she doing? Right. Well, from what I gathered, well, on the twin on the show, the twenty twenty show, I, I really don't want to besmirch this woman or say anything, but I feel like her answer. She's like, well, I always felt that there was someone else there. Well, you know, that's what the, when she found out that the guy would that it was just the guy said it was him and it was him alone. She's still trying to hang to the narrative that it was all of those guys and this because the police don't want to let that up. Right. They want to say that he, it was another person right. involved with them. And then all these years, too, psychologically, that's in her right. mind as well. Right, exactly. So, so I can't, I can't fault her because that's a that's a that's a lot. That's those are many many years of being told this one Correct. story and believing that. And I'm pretty certain she's done a lot of work. For herself just as a survivor of something yeah. so horrific mm -hmm. right. that you know now having to okay maybe this is not the story and having to think like okay i was a part you know unwittingly i was a part of this miscarriage of justice with these guys story and i don't right. want to you know right right and i don't you, you know i don't want the guilt of that on me as well as being a victim of this crime you know it's a lot it's a lot it's a to lot. put that, on her that. it's a lot to so right. i'm not i'm not willing to you know make any comments to besmirch her but what yeah. i am going to say is the police officers the district attorneys and all those other people that made careers off of this case and that dude shame in on you an office too yeah i'm not gonna mention shame on you who also oh, oh gosh that, um um advertised yeah to get them he into went jail. Hard. He went advertised hard. straight yeah. advertised but anyway that, big up to yousef because i got yeah. a chance to speak to him um for another show right. uh, injury review and whatnot now i commend can, him can for we being We'll, we'll we'll work that out when he's ready. Yeah, I gotta commend him for being just put together and just so focused the way he is after all of that. I was just amazed. With uh, he's always been that. It's <clears throat> it's amazing. It's kind of like he's always been this person. Like he's right. always had this calm manner about himself. He was right. fun. He was a lot of, but he had a calm and determined and a strong sense of self. And I think that that strong sense of self is what made him be the only one that did not confess to anything. You know, he was just already at such a young age, you know, grounded yeah. in himself. Yeah, definitely, definitely. It would have been um, a different situation if uh person like me would have got out and everybody lied on me. And I had to spend a day in prison. I had to see things. Yeah. Hear things, things probably did to me or whatever, or I do things to people, whatever. To let me go through that right. and I'm out. Would have been a different kind of right. story. Right. Right. Well, put that aside now. I want to ask you about <laughs> <laughs> songwriting and what you're doing with Caius. Right. Um given all the people that you've worked with, uh the heavyweights, legends mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. game. Like yourself. Um, would you now at this point in time would you approach things differently as far as like um songwriting for them what you would have given them as far as songs or just how you would approach things uh as a, as a songwriter well um for me whenever i would uh you know because like with the backstreet boys at the time uh what i was told that oh there's this group from florida because they they hadn't been right. discovered yet they hadn't hit anything they just were a band in florida and you know they were signed to jive records and timmy allen was the producer that i worked with and Quite he nice. and um he said yeah the, you know we want to get on this project and you know write some stuff for them so i you know timmy did the production and i wrote the lyrics and melody for it and i just as you tell me it's for a boy band so i knew to write different parts and things like that and what was the song it's called darling it's on their first album it went 14 million well 
half wow. the time. Yeah, it's so full. Everybody out there, you can't million. see the way I said to me. You just went 14 million. And she owned the That's publishing. That's a lot. That's a lot. <laughs> she has a publishing too. <laughs> from, yeah. jump, oh from jump. From jump. From jump. So yeah. it well first so the, the it was interesting with that. <laughs> Ty's here too. Okay. <laughs> it's like you when you can take us out. I I, I can take. I out. will not tell my lady. Don't worry. About it. Wait, I don't want nobody coming after me. I'm good. Like, so. No, no, she know you spent. I'm just straight. Right. So I'm good. <laughs> She's a team player. Trust me, team player. Oh my god, yeah. So it's like um, I th- I think. When I started working with Timmy, uh, when we got together and we were working on that project, it was just like, yeah, we have these five guys who want uh, to do this, a guy group, guy band. I wrote it, and then I demoed it, and we sent it off. And who and came out of Backstreet Boys? Aaron Carter. Oh. Uh, Aaron Carter's was little brother. Was he before brother. Justin Bieber? Or was His little brother was. Okay. The little, what, Nick Nick, Nick Carter. Carter. Nick Carter. No, Aaron Carter was the brother. Nick was in Backstreet Boys. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, Aaron was the younger one. And oh, he was after was Justin, though. Yeah. He was before Justin Bieber. He was before Justin Bieber. Yeah, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm getting my boy pants messed up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because, um, like, it was, you know, New Kids on a Block. Then it was these guys. NSYNC. Backstreet Boys. Then it was NSYNC. Okay. NSYNC, yeah. So, NSYNC was like Backstreet Boy 2.0. Right. You know, like it right. was like so. Right. So, so you wouldn't you 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 would use the same approach as far as like or uh, would you what? Would you? For me, what I try to do is first and foremost, I don't want to hear anything, any music, or until I sit down and I'm ready to write because my process is I want to honor the truth, the first thought, the tr- the that what I feel is the truest direction. Um, so as soon as I'm ready to write and I'm hearing you create something. Maybe I'm sitting there and you're creating it while I'm there and whatever's coming to mind there, I feel like that is what is supposed to be for this here. So I'm, I try not to do any, I don't want to hear any tracks. I don't want to hear anything until I'm ready to sit down and start writing because you know, it's like the way my mind works, all the ideas and things that are constantly going through my brain as soon as i'm thinking of an idea if i'm not getting that idea down or recording it somewhere it it goes because the next idea is right around the corner you know it's just like rapid fire a lot of times for me so sometimes i can i have the process where i can sit down and write a song in 15 minutes sometimes it takes a little longer you know and sometimes you'll have those periods where or a song where it's just a little more difficult and you you're writing it and you're just not getting everything. It's not coming to you. Um, it's not flowing that day. And so you just kind of step away from it. I don't ever try to force myself because I feel that it, then I'll write crap. You can't force crap. a creative process. You know, I, you yeah, I want to. I And I have songs that I've forced. And I'm sure I make certain to keep those around. So whenever I'm thinking of forcing the issue or maybe I'm having a little writer's block, I can play those songs that I know are crap and <laughs> just like this is i'm just gonna wait until you yeah. know it's until we get the publishing check until we are uh <laughs> i'm just gonna wait until well, you know right. it's flowing for me again right so right. like with this i gotta say with this new project that i'm working on though well, first uh, you guys are uh broadcasting out in chicago yes i have a little history with chicago um wgci up there i used okay. to i used to um go out there i had a song on the Eddie soundtrack back in the days With called Say Whoopi It Again. Goldberg, when yes. she was the coach of the It was Knicks. called, yeah, I had the single off that uh, off that song. It was called Say It Again. Wow. I did a video for that, and it was pretty big in Chicago. Wow. So I'd gone out there and done some dates out there, and, you know, and it was it was, it was was doing very well in Chicago. So shout out to nice, Chi-Town. Nice. And uh, all, maybe wow. some of you guys are familiar with yeah. <laughs> some of the stuff that I've done. Um, or they'll get familiar with this, right? Magic and so, roses, uh, right? So with so with this project, first with my past projects, what I've put out, it's been more of a R and B, straight R and B, you know, experience, um, traditional R and B uh, experience for people that listen to my music. With this, with this band Caius that I formed with my partner Alex Sterling. 
Alex is a producer as well as a, he owns a commercial studio here in New York, Precision Sound Studios. It's really? amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It's amazing. I've heard of it. um, he's worked, Alex is a very talented and he's a, a sound engineer and he has worked with some of the greats. Leslie Uggams is We're going to have, studio. you know like, what? It's, you know what, Kev? We're going to go to Precision and we're going to have to talk to, to Alex. Listen, you know? yeah, yeah. You're going to bring the show to him. Yeah, yeah, y- yeah. He, I, I think he would welcome <laughs> that. We, we mobile. Yeah, I think he would, <laughs> I, he would obviously, he would definitely <laughs> yeah. welcome that. And um, he, so I met Alex a few years ago and we started to, they were looking for, he, he had a partner, uh, Seth Beverly. I met Alex through Seth. And they were looking for songwriters that they could collaborate with. They were producers. And, you know, they had a really unique sound, something totally different. I had not heard of it, heard anything like it before. They weren't afraid to really play with all the different textures and genres and just throw yeah. a whole bunch of stuff in there. Like, they weren't afraid at all. They were just, it was very interesting stuff. And, as a writer, it really challenged me. So I enjoyed working with them because I felt that the work that I was doing was always very different. I was singing differently because it required me to do different things with my voice that I wasn't doing in R&B music. And, it, and the, I felt that I could put a bit more of depth in the lyrics uh, because you know, it was kind of that type of mood type music where you could do that. Mm-hmm. So fast forward maybe three years now, Alex and I were totaling away in the studio and just creating this sound, you know, this vibe. We're trying to, we've done, if I let you listen to some of the other stuff that we've done, it's just like all over the place. Just We just like to go wherever we can creatively. We, we don't... Um, ever hold ourselves back or say oh no that's not our vibe that's not our sound right it's literally i come in there we talk a little bit about whatever is going on in our lives and chit chat and then he'll turn around and just start making some music and then i sit there while he's making this and i'm and you make magic start right and that's exactly what happened and the song magic like like you said right it's there's so many things in there. There's right. like there's salsa, there's pop, there's R and B, there's right. dance. There's like so many different things in there, and it's like like you just you 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 you're taking everywhere. Right. Wait a minute. Wait. At our, you were there when Niniola was there. At our, at our yes, uh, but I no. I think I I I met her briefly, but then I had to leave, so I didn't get to witness okay. her performance. But yeah, I I saw but, but clips you, of it. But but we you met. I did meet her. Yes, Good. I did meet. Yeah, Good. she's a very pretty girl too. She's you know, uh, very lovely. She's that that woman. So I'm pretty sure, yeah. due time. Yeah, you I guys mean, said, hey, we met together at the birthday event and do your own magic. Right. I would. I would love it. I she's mean, she's coming back to New York in about another week. I would love that. I'm open Coast. to working with anyone. I I I just really appreciate you know what you can get from sharing your talents with other people and just mm. I'm open to whatever you can new thing you can create and that's one of the things that I really loved about working with Alex is that um, I felt it's just boundless like there's I literally go in there and I we can talk about anything and write about anything I never know what we're going to come up with it's just a very organic experience and I feel like everyone's like wow this is it doesn't sound like anything but it sounds like everything, you right. know. It kind of like it has like a feel <laughs> right. of all these different things, but it doesn't that's sound like everywhere. anything that's. And I and right, I, that's a win everywhere. That's a win everywhere. Right. <laughs> and before, you know, it used to be like you had to kind of narrow down what your sound was, you know. And the way that the industry is now, we're not so we're not forced to do that. You could literally do all types of genres of music and put them out and. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. You know, people are appreciating it and whoever it's going to gravitate to whatever single or like it it's not a album driven market anymore. Yeah, people are putting out albums but for the right. most part it's they're putting out singles. singles. They're working with all these different artists and just creating whatever their vibe is. Absolutely. So, with side note. Did anybody ever tell you that you the lady resembles you from uh Blade? Blade's mom? 
Blade. The movie Blade was Tomar and Boucher, right? No, no, that no. wasn't Sana, get, That's Sana Lathan. That no. Was Sana you know who I get? I get Tika Sumner. She was Blade's mom, if that's what you're talking about. Well, who, who was the other black lady? And Boucher, right? Then that's who it was. In, yeah. At the moment. I've never gotten Boucher. I've gotten um, Tika Sumner. I've gotten um, uh, Regina Calloway, the one that was. Was that her name? Regina Calloway? What, what, what movie? What's her name? Uh, what, what not show? Regina. Um, not Regina. It's. Uh, Regina Hall? I can't think about it. No. Well, you got Calloway. the play outfit on, um, too. She was in. Uh, she was in uh, Coming to America, and she was the yeah. wife. Oh, Vanessa yeah, she, Bell Calloway. Vanessa Calloway, Bell Calloway yeah. Vanessa Bell Remember, Calloway. I said they resemble you. I answered you. Right, right, right. <laughs> so I, I, when people... Take me out with your publishing <laughs> now. Yeah. Yeah. So funny. It's like when people uh, come up to me, and they're like, are you... You look like the girl from um, Ride Along or the girl from uh-huh. uh, the Have and the Have Nots. She has a show that, so there's like uh-huh. Candace, and I'm like, no. <laughs> like, <laughs> NK. I'm NK. Right, right. So it's kind of weird. I'm like, no, I'm, no, I'm not her. But that's also a win because before they know, they're like, oh, so and so has a song out. Right. <laughs> He's in the band. Right. <laughs> And then when you appear before them, you're like, oh, I'm N.K. Morton. This is Caius. And this right. is what I do. And right. You love the music. So right. now you're introduced to me. Right. 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 It's 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 been interesting, though, because you go about your life for all your years. You're out here going about your life. And, you know, then someone comes on the scene and you they everyone thinks you guys look alike. So now it's <laughs> right. kind of like, oh, yeah, you? I, I get that, too. No. They're going to be boys called you. I'm like, all right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Did they call you Boris? Like Boris Kojo. Who else they tell you? Oh, wait. Well, I'm looking at you. Wait. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <Little> Boris. <laughs> you got to stick the chin out more. Like. <laughs> I don't know. Like him. <laughs> right. So we're running out of time. So um, the magic we're going to play, Bed of Roses, I, okay. I mentioned with, I told you, yeah. it's like very cinematic soundtrack like it could be in a scene of a show like it has that type of feel to it well i just want to say a couple a couple of things about well magic is a song about you know just your being po- being positive believing in yourself understanding that you know everything that you need is within you you know don't take on the partial of the world don't take on don't you know quiet the noise and step into your greatness that's basically what i was feeling when i sitting down writing those lyrics now as far as better roses i just you know that was after a day of cnn and it was just a lot (laughs) it was a lot it was a lot that news that president it was a lot and you know it's like i wrote this song because the climate of the country and everything that was going on it was just so much and i just and i felt like people are not really paying attention you know, and how this is going to affect us for generations, the stuff that right. they're laying down, these judges they're putting into, uh, um, into on the on the bench, the laws they're that are going to be here. Kavanaugh. Uh, but I, they're going to be long felt, you know, repercussions for all of these yeah. things that yeah. took place. Vote, vote, voting matters. You know, your vote counts. You know, for all those people for years who, uh, you vote, it really does matter. You need to go to the polls and not just go to the polls for the presidential election. You need to go to the polls for your local elections. The local elections are the ones that control your life. Yes, indeed. The local elections are the most important elections. That is the, the, these are the laws you're governed by day to day. Yep. The, this is and these are the representatives you send to write those federal laws that then you know govern the rest of your life you know so exactly. it's let's let's be smart about this this time around and get out there and do the right thing right right every election exactly vote and you can hear a lot of this in the song better roses that, yeah that and Kay's talking about yeah it was know, a lot of frustration about it you know and i i think that a lot of people were feeling that and that was just a shh, let me release that and uh i can't even watch new, the news anymore it's it's yeah uh, yeah i watched so, the laugh and i uh, walk away like Haha. it's depressing it's, I, I, I don't even bother, <laughs> <laughs> bother with it no 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 and a lot of it is made up too yeah like that, a lot of it's not even real it's just people just making up stories uh, even when i found about roe versus wade i found that was false what do you mean it's not even really a name she lied what do you yeah. mean 
the woman behind Roe versus Wade, mm-hmm. the abortion, mm-hmm. it's all false. Well, well, that's, no, no, that's, that's, story, that's another day. Yeah, that's a whole other situation. Yeah, that's but another day. Where can they get information or where they can get okay. the music, the, the new singles, Info on Caius, all that kind of stuff. Caius and more Music. And more N.K. Morton stuff yeah, as well. Yeah, it's CaiusMusic.com, K-A-I-A-S, Caius. Uh, we are on Instagram, Caius Makes Music. Uh, we are on, I mean, you can find us in every uh, major platform, Spotify, Tidal, um, iTunes, Apple Music. We're, we're everywhere. If you want to buy it, download it. Apple Music, uh, you can buy it on Amazon as well. Um, we are just everywhere. Do our social media, like I said, Instagram, Facebook, whoever uses Facebook, I'm kind of, <laughs> kind of off them right now. Like they doing too much. Like Facebook is doing too much. I feel like promotion they're really for the culpable. show. That's what I use it for. Uh, yeah, I feel like they're really culpable for a lot of the stuff that has happened this past election, and the stuff that's going on right now, and the fact that they bumped off. Um, Minister Farrakhan is really a problem. You yeah, know, that, yeah, it's that's, really that's a problem. But you know, yeah. I mean, this. <laughs> that's a whole other don't thing. get me started. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what? Don't you know get me started. We'll bring you. We'll bring you back for part three. <laughs> right, right, <laughs> right. With Sterling, maybe. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> you know. What I mean? So my music, it's it's everywhere. Caius makes music. It, uh, that's our my Instagram. That's the band's Instagram page. If you want to follow me, I am NK Morton. I'm on Instagram as well. Uh, if you want to find, follow Alex, he's at Precision Sound Studio. That's his IG uh, handle as well. Um, and check out his studio. He's an amazing sound engineer and producer. You know, like he does phenomenal work. Definitely, so. definitely. Well, we, we're gonna bring the show to him soon. So mm-hmm. tell him to get ready. Yes, tell him to get yes. ready. You're, he's gonna, you're gonna love that, and I think he's gonna love it too because he's just doing these major renovation in the studio. It's gonna be crazy. Okay, just cool. All right. Well, you may have crazy. to get up a room Insane. <laughs> up in there. Well, we want to thank you for being on the That's program uh, once again. Uh, That's for later. N.K. Morton, thank you very much for joining us. Thermal sound wave, wave.